What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Coast Coast Gridiron, a football podcast. We got a good one today. Uh, be sitting down with a former teammate of mine, current St. FX, uh, St. Francis Xavier student athlete, uh, the pride of Strathmore, Alberta, if I'm not mistaken, one Nathan. Should have actually clarified this before we uh, hit record, buddy. Hopefully I'm saying your name correct because that's one of my biggest pet peeves of my last name. But <laughs> I believe it is Nathan Cayouette. Uh, a lot of people will probably know him as Yodi, but Nate, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining me and uh, coming on the pod tonight. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Super honored and blessed to get on this podcast and, you know, I'll just talk. Like I said, uh, Yodi and I were uh, blessed, I guess you could say, to be teammates one another uh, 2019. So four, crazy how time flies, buddy. Going on four years ago uh, out here on VI with the Raiders uh yodi was a, a rookie and i was a, a, a an old bet fifth year uh <laughs> but but respected yodi's game right away he uh he basically seamlessly came in on our defense and uh fit right in and was a impact player from day one so uh just excited buddy i know you've been on your journey here in the last few years kind of uh creating your own path out there on the uh east coast i know you're not quite a west coast boy but you're pretty much considering you know your adopted vi boy and then being yeah. from alberta that's pretty pretty considering where you are uh over there and i believe it's uh it's nova scotia correct yeah correct nova scotia yeah so coming from alberta man you're a long ways from home so just uh like i said i was excited to sit down and chat with you buddy and kind of just pick your brain and go back and forth i know you have uh some other things going on uh outside the field i guess you could say that i'm excited to kind of sit down and chat chat with you about so um i guess before we get going folks if you guys don't mind uh that are tuning in tonight please like comment subscribe share the podcast all that good stuff check out the uh, apple podcast account the youtube channel is uh doing well we are on the road to 100 subscribers so go over there get us to 100 subscribers they would be greatly appreciated uh so yodi let's get into uh your journey buddy and before we get into the football side of things let's take it back to uh i guess where your your, your roots and, and kind of your beginnings in strathmore if i'm not mistaken where you uh grew up could you maybe just fill in the folks and maybe kind of just uh you know maybe some of your kind of maybe where you grew up if you have any siblings that sort of thing maybe some of your role models influence kind of your, your parents or anything like that anything that comes to mind in terms of maybe just kind of uh introducing yourself to the audience a little bit yeah, so um, I'm from Strathmore, Alberta, which not a lot of people know where that is. So it's basically a t small town east of Calgary, um, an hour and out. And um, yeah, it's basically where my football um, journey started. Um, as people know from Strathmore, we're a small town, but uh, with athletics, we're, you know, we, we handle with the best, you know, we compete with the best. And you know, um, played football, basketball, baseball when I was young. Basically, my parents wanted me to get into everything because uh, they think they thought that uh, it's going to teach me, you know, val valuable lessons with uh, each sport individually. And then um, I have one older sister. She played sports earlier, but then um, she uh, decided to focus on cheerleading um, throughout her high school career and all that. And then, yeah, basically with Strathmore, just um, basically a lot of people. It's like a small community, basically like St. Effects, and it's just like every, everyone's family, you know. And um, my role models, um, I'd probably say uh, there's probably a lot, but um, probably people like Matthew Laszlo, Matthew Laszlo which was uh, – he was my high school head coach for basketball. Um, he kind of was there for me when I was at my lowest and kind of just kept me pushing through. And um, I wouldn't be where I am today without him, as well with other people like um, Darrell Hardgrove, my mom, my dad, my sister. Basically, there's a lot of people that it probably take an hour to shout out. But, you know, you know, if you, the people, you know, for Roma. So, yeah, that's basically it. Small town Strathmore. One of those, uh, if you know, you know, shout out type things, buddy. Um, so let, let's take it back. You, you, you kind of mentioned that, you know, you, know, you played a, lo a lot of sports growing up, baseball, basketball. Um, take us back to kind of the beginning of your sports career. And uh, I guess kind of what, I guess, take us, what were, what, were, what were some of your first sports playing? And then when did you decide to play football for the first time?
All, uh, all good here, folks. Like, Welcome back, folks. Sorry about that little technical difficulties. Uh, so, Yodi, as that was going on, buddy, um, could you tell us a little bit about when you started playing those sports, uh, such as, you know, baseball, basketball, and then when did you start officially playing football, tackle football, I guess, for the first time? Yeah, so um, basically my first sport was uh, baseball. I think I started when I was uh, six or seven. It was like t-ball. So I started going as that. And then that was basically the spring sport. And then I started playing football about that same age, tackle football. And then I didn't start basketball till grade six. So I was 12 years old. But um, so basically bat or baseball and football was basically my two main sports at that time. And then kept playing football, kept playing baseball. But then once I started getting older, I started um, loving basketball more than baseball so it kind of uh, baseball kind of uh, got out of the plan and it was basically just uh, basketball during the winter slash spring and then football during the fall yeah as you get older definitely when you when you're probably I'd say maybe you know I, I would probably say elementary school up until grade seven until you get to high school it's it's probably pretty reasonable to, to play three sports but once you get up to a little bit of an older age when you're kind of balancing the books and, and kind of you know, you start to get into high school, right? You want to hang out with your friends and stuff like that. It's it's hard to, uh, you know, commit yourself to three sports. You're, you're kind of running here, there, and everywhere, trying to, uh, you know, study and stuff like that, be a good student. So um, I hear you with uh, growing out of sports. My sport, actually, that I grew out of was soccer, unfortunately. I grew up playing soccer. Soccer was my, my first sport. I'm not too sure, actually, how many of my listeners actually probably know that. Um, but soccer was the first sport I ever played because, obviously, it's, it's one of the cheaper sports you can play, right? Yeah. All you need is... Uh, so some cleats and some shin pads and you don't even really need a ball usually your team supplies a bunch of balls so um, it was definitely easy for me to play soccer on Saturdays and have a lot of fun with that and um, my next question Yodi was I guess kind of I'm not too sure if you saw uh, I guess a little plug for my last episode 25 you guys are listening to this haven't listened to that one go check it out with Theo Benedet uh, UBC right tackle you know he was an, uh, an athlete growing up as well and uh, the same thing that I, I want to ask you is kind of how much do you think of your uh, multi-sport athleticism plays a part into your football skills today? A lot. It's so huge. Like, if I didn't play, like, basketball or baseball, I don't think I would be at the level that I'm competing at for football-wise just because baseball, with each sport, you can be very good at, you know, certain skills. And then once you combine, like, the both sports into, like, another sport, then it can just – separate you from other people saying they just played one sport or two sports so i really recommend for anyone just especially like during when you're young just to play as many sports try out as many sports and once you start getting older you can start focusing on one or two and then yeah basically that's it okay buddy so as you get into your older years <coughs> i guess first but we'll, we'll kind of get into the football side of things now folks my first question to to you is what was your first position that you played in football? Obviously, everyone has those stories of, you know, maybe you were a left guard or defensive tackle or something like that. Were you a true, you know, maybe your defensive back position right away? Or what position was your first position in football? Yeah, actually, my first position in football was safety. So okay. I was not a too DB. far off. Yeah, I was a DB from the get go. But then I started playing running back more. And then high school, so my grade 12 year, we didn't really have a lot of people to kind of form a team. So basically, each week, I kind of just played different positions. I played left guard for a game. I played linebacker, safety, running back, like you name it, long snapper. I kicked once. Like, it was just basically all around, like, every position just played. You, you sound like uh, Chang a little bit. Shout out to one of our former teammates. Uh, Chang actually had to play left guard for me one game. Uh, kind of a similar situation of, uh, you know, not having a lot of players as well at our high school. And uh, that's funny. I, I definitely see some s similarities in the way that you guys play and uh, the kind of athletes that you guys are, the, the special type of uh, players that both of you guys are. So um, as we get into it, buddy, I'm curious uh, from, you know, I always ask guests that I have on of kind of how was their high school experience? Usually that that a lot of the guests I have on, they're, they're from BC. So I kind of have a, a reasonable sense of how maybe their, you know, experience was in high school football in terms of, you know, maybe atmosphere kind of with, you know, crowds uh, at school, that sort of thing. 
personally at my high school it wasn't really taken too seriously like uh unless you were playing at you know maybe noon on a friday you probably have only like uh you know maybe 10 or 12 parents there if that on on, on fridays uh if it was a friday night game maybe you'd have a few more people out just seeing as though it was a friday night but i'm curious you know do you take us through maybe your high school experience uh you know wins losses if you guys were good um competed or not um and then just kind of how, how was your kind of experience with you know it being maybe taken seriously in your town, in your high school, that sort of thing. Yeah. So basically in Strathmore, Strathmore is basically more like mostly like a hockey town slash like it was either hockey or basketball. Those were basically the two main sports that a lot of people would go and watch. So football was basically just like our moms or like moms, dad, parents, like maybe a couple friends. It wasn't that big, but it was it was a great experience like from grade 10 to grade 12 i we had a big like we had a big uh group of guys that kind of just stuck together from grade 10 and 12 and basically we were even though we were a small school like we didn't have a lot of players we we're still one of the top teams in our tiers for alberta top 10 and then my grade 10 year actually it was um it was the first time that we clinched a uh, provincial berth in school history. And then that was basically our expectations every year. Grade 11, it wasn't, it wasn't our best season. We didn't go uh, to provincials that year, but we beat the a number one team that hasn't like didn't lose in four years, like regular season wise. So we were able to pull that upset off. And then grade 12, it was a great season um we were close of getting into the semifinals for provincials so overall it was a great experience like football it was a small town football kind of atmosphere but it was good uh, i'm curious right away how was your playoff format was it was it kind of just uh, a regular playoff format like w one through eight or whatever or I'm, I'm curious is it like a tournament style uh yeah so basically we had five teams in our league and it was basically um, the fifth team and the uh, fourth team would play to like get into the playoffs and it'd be one versus four, two versus three. Okay. And uh, the other difference is, Yodi, because everybody in BC plays American football for the most part. You guys, obviously, everyone outside of BC, I guess, plays Canadian rules in high school, uh, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys playing that from uh, the jump, I feel like is somewhat of a, a, a uh, I wouldn't say an upper hand, but it definitely is uh helpful when it comes to playing you know junior football around the country when you're in bc playing that four downs um i guess this the, football is football at the end of the day i guess the biggest difference is just that yard off the ball um and and kind of that would be the, the biggest kind of getting used to for some of us uh guys that play high school football american wise so as you get uh out of your high school career towards the end of your high school career wh whenever i guess I'm curious, when did you decide that maybe that you had uh, in mind that you wanted to play post-secondary football, whether it was, you know, junior or at uh, St. FX? When did that start to maybe come into your mind, whether it be grade 12 or, or earlier? Yeah, so basically it was after my grade 11 spring ball season. So it was my grade 11, it was the first time doing spring ball, got couple of buddies of mine told me like hey you should do spring ball for uh this spring i was like okay i'm sh like i'm down so had a really good season spring ball and then after one of our playoffs game um it was actually crazy i was coming from a vi guy langley rams were the first uh set of people that came and uh started talking to me up uh to me about playing post like post high school ball so that that kind of grew my interest and then throughout my grade 12 season started getting interest from a couple junior teams couple youth sports teams a uh, couple junior college in the states div three basically um everything around and then grade 12 i kind of decided like hey i really want to do this and uh so i guess you end up sorry to i i guess you know you can maybe uh uh talk about yourself a little bit yodi but you end up to, to spoil things you end up uh committing to vi and i'm guessing you had a visit from one glenn cook but before you get into why you decided to commit to vi uh can you maybe tell us like maybe who were your some other schools that were 
uh, you were interested as well as they were interested in you, obviously. Um, what, what, like, talk about maybe who who were some of those, uh, you know, U Sports teams as well as maybe some of those other, uh, you know, CGFL teams or uh, just other teams in general that you were interested in going to. Yeah, so um, <laughs> junior-wise, I was basically contacted by uh, Chilliwack, Okanagan, VI, Langley, um, Kamloops, basically everywhere. Uh, no, nobody back home. Nobody back home. Um, Calgary. Okay. But I wasn't. I already told them no. I wasn't too interested in Calgary. And then U Sports. Um, I did get contacted by Saint FX in 2018. So that was kind of like the top school. And then I was kind of looking at. Um, Windsor, and I was looking kind of everywhere, kind of looking at Regina, Edmonton, kind of just looking everywhere. And then in the States, it was like uh, Juco, I don't remember the names, but it was like um, one in Kansas, and then there's one in um, Pennsylvania, like Div 3 school, and I was kind of looking at that too. And uh, so Tell us about, I'm guessing, one Glenn Cook paid you a visit at uh, maybe a high school uh, visit or something like that. How, what what was the uh, some of your reasoning behind committing to VI as an Alberta boy? Yeah, so actually, I n- never heard of Glenn Cook. It wasn't Glenn Cook. It was um, Josh Williams. Oh, contacted. right. So, yeah. Sorry, you got mixing up my uh, <laughs> years here, buddy. <laughs> it's all good but yeah it was uh j-dubs that contacted um me saying he was interested and then visa also came in um to the conversation and saying that um i should come out and uh go do the spring camp so basically me and a couple of buddies from strathmore decided to go do uh spring camp in vi and then once i first like put my foot in and bank on Vancouver Island. I just fell in love with the uh, place, like sitting, you know, living right by the ocean. Just, it was so beautiful. And then once we started getting to like practice with spring camp, it was just like the mentality that I saw around the guys that it was like hard nose, like, Hey, like we're going to give you a uh, hell, hell time, you know? And then it kind of, kind of felt with my uh, mentality in a way. And then I also saw an opportunity that I could, you know, potentially play right away. So I decided that at the end of the day, that VI was the best place for me. So I committed there. So I know a lot of uh, kids that are coming out. A common thing is that they, they'll go to like a few spring camps. Was that a thing for you? Did you did you not only go to VI spring camp? Did you maybe even go to a few spring camps or did you just kind of uh, maybe fall in love right away and, and decide maybe? Uh, I was just going to go with VI from the jump almost. Yeah, so I basically <coughs> had offer, had other opportunities to uh, do spring camps with other junior teams, but um, I was busy with, like, graduation, and um, I was playing spring basketball at the time too, so it was kind of busy. And then after I, I just fell in love with VI so much that I didn't really need to go to another spring camp that I just wanted to be in VI. <coughs> Yeah, absolutely, buddy. So you end up committing to VI. Uh, we get into the season. And uh, if if you don't mind, I believe um, a few weeks before you end up getting the unfortunate news, I believe uh, someone that was important to you uh, passed away, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, could you just maybe talk a little bit about who that person was that was special to you and then just how hard that was on you of, uh, you know, I would, I would imagine an 18-year-old uh, kid that's kind of moving away from home. Obviously, it's not, you know, Nova Scotia far, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's another it's a, it's another province uh, away. You're you're not able to you know drive an hour back to mom and dad's house, right? You're you're on your own. It's it's kind of you know I got to figure this out quick, and I, I got to figure this out on my own. Obviously, you have your boys and your teammates around and stuff like that. But um, can you just tell us about you know that's definitely one thing that I, I definitely take my cap off to some of you youngins that that uh, have come out here like fr- from you know the prairies or anything like that. That you know that was something that. Um, definitely was probably a big factor of me not wanting to play football right away um, after high school. Just that, that, you know, that fear of leaving the nest, if that's what you want to say. Right. And um, I'm not too sure actually of how many people know, but I had the opportunity to probably go to Kamloops right away after high school, but was just a little bit too, you know, maybe scared if you want to, if, if I'm being kind of honest with myself of, you know, taking that leap of faith to, to, you know, leave home and uh, feeling comfortable. 
Now, obviously, I want to say two weeks after their spring camp, I ended up breaking my uh, hand, Yodi. So things kind of uh, happened for 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 whatever reason. But um, I ended up not going. And I, like I said, I just I tip my cap off to you guys for kind of taking that uh, you know leap of faith and kind of leaving home and, and kind of growing up quick and, and learning how to you know handle your business and handle your shit on your own and and kind of grow up and uh, learn how to be a man. So can you tell us a little bit about that? point in your life and, and how that uh you know special person as well yeah so basically um training camp started uh first week of july ish and then a month before um i lost my grandpa to cancer and um i was very close with them and all that so just leaving home was uh very hard because i still my mindset um i still wanted to be home you know with my family and friends and um it was just hard as a 17 year old, like just uh, kind of trying to get ready, you know, to get ready for a new chapter, but while also trying more in the loss of my grandpa, which I was, like I said, I was very close with. So it was very hard. Um, but talking with my family, with my dad, my mom, with like my best friend back home, they said that I should just go to BC because just go chase your dream because there's not a lot of people that can get have that opportunity to go so decided to you know continue and kept you know with my my commitment that I was going to go and go play and then when I was uh in BC for first couple of weeks it was really hard because I didn't really know anyone and I was still mourning the loss of my grandpa so it was really I felt like homesick, like there's some times <laughs> that um, I just wanted to go back home to Alberta, which back to Nanaimo and to Strathmore was a 13 hour like car uh, drive. So it was really hard to, you know, get settled in. But with um, with my getting to know the guys and the coaches and just they knew the situation I was in and they just made me feel like home and I was uh, able to be comfortable and uh, sell in. Yeah, buddy. Like I said, I tip my cap off to you guys that, you know, take that leap of faith and, and you know, uh, take a step outside of your comfort zone, right? And kind of push your push your limits. And I think that's a big reason of, the, you know, the person that you are today, why you're uh, so great. And, uh, you know, but it's kind of funny that, that it, you know, th- this is, I feel like, uh, you know, your mentality is kind of, you know, you, you don't really let people, you know, stop you from anything and kind of slow you down. And uh, it's definitely one thing that I've respected from you, Yodi, ever since uh, we've been able to cross paths, buddy. So you end up uh, coming out to VI. And like you said, you had uh, you had kind of the, the vision that you would have maybe an early opportunity to make an impact. You end up starting in our defense pretty much uh, r- right away, correct, um, yeah. at field side halfback. I would say, you know, Yodi, obviously I'm a little bit biased, buddy. I would say these <laughs> the second hardest position in Canadian football outside of obviously the quarterback position. But uh, that is a topic for another day, I guess you could say. But (laughs) that being said, you know, playing the the field side uh, half, you know, as a uh, 17, 18 year old kid with, you know, 22 year olds that have played in this league for a little while and kind of, you know, things start to slow down. You know, for for me, that's what I would definitely say the biggest thing. I would imagine you're kind of seeing that now of of being in your uh, third or fourth year there at at St. FX. Of kind of seeing things slow down a little bit and seeing the game uh really kind of happen in front of you and being able to uh play fast when you're you know 17 18 year old you can tend to be a little bit maybe slow and kind of you know uh you know i don't want to say pussyfoot but you know yeah. uh you can you kind of you know half step a little bit and, and be a little bit shy and that's something that from the jump that we didn't see from you and you kind of uh you know you were out there tackling you know big deep freezer like quarterbacks down in west shore um <laughs> you know duncan little as well over there in langley so um, no fear right away. And uh, I guess that that's kind of maybe before we get a little bit too far and kind of maybe uh, a little bit of teaser, but I'm curious, Yodi, where did uh, kind of all this juice or energy come from? Uh, you know, I'm talking about, obviously, I, I wish I had a little bit more uh, editing skills, Yodi. I would crop in a picture <laughs> of uh, your, your kind of pregame ritual with the, the face paint and all that stuff, taking yeah. it back to the VI days. Obviously, you continued that out at St. FX, and then, you know, with the uh, the energetic sellies that I love so much, you, you've you always been doing that since, uh, you know, since I've always, pl- I've played with you, excuse me, um, and I have seen the, the few clips of you at St. FX doing the same thing, obviously with a little bit bigger crowd out there and, and kind of a little bit more energy and, and atmosphere. So I'm curious before we get into to VI a little bit more, where did that come from? Because obviously maybe, you know, 
if you talk to you outside of the field, you'd probably never expect that. You're a pretty quiet kid and kind of a uh, respectful manner kid. And uh, is that kind of maybe an alter ego, if you want to call it, or, or is that just kind of flipping the switch on game day and kind of turning into that, uh, that, that other side of you, I guess? Yeah, literally off the field, I'm just like this chill, like quiet guy, like, you know, just going with the flow, like, you know, just like to socialize too and all that. But um, on the field, it's a whole different story. Um, ever since I was young, ever since I started playing football, I got a lot of people that told me that I would never uh, succeed in life, that I would never succeed in football, that maybe I was too short or too small to play. And that basically just drive me with motivation just because every time I go on the field, I just want, I remember, I remember what people tell me that if I, that I wasn't good enough, that I will never succeed. And that's basically, if people see me, how I play, that's basically, that's where it comes from. It's just like, I just want to prove them wrong. It's just like, I don't say anything back to them. Basically, I just put my head down and just work and make sure that I will let them know that I will outwork them and I will give them everything that I have to for me to succeed. Love it, buddy. And uh, that's another one of the things that, you know, that I love about you is that juice and energy you bring every game day and uh, it's infectious and it definitely rubs off. So keep doing that, buddy, because I know your teammates out there probably feed out of it. And I definitely say that I fed it off it back in the day of seeing this little uh, 17, 18 year old kid in uh, full face paint, bringing the juice after he's laying the wood. So uh, keep doing that, buddy. So you end up coming out to VI starting right away. I remember you making some plays in spring camp. I'll always remember you because your cleats. And uh, you, you being kind of a pain in the uh, ass to throw to your side <laughs> from uh, from the jump. So um, I guess maybe just take us through your rookie season a little bit, if you don't mind. I know uh, we probably didn't as much click, uh, you know, off the field, I would say. Obviously, uh, you know, we're brothers on the field and stuff like that. But you probably being the 17 year old, you gravitated to, you know, your kind of crowd, you know, with, you know, Will and stuff like that. Uh, rightfully so, right? And obviously, you know that I love you and, and we're brothers, but. Um, take us through, you know, kind of those relationships that you grew with, with kind of those, those guys that helped you get, uh, through, you know, you met somebody out here as well and, and Zach and stuff like that, that was also a rookie coming in. Um, so take us through your rookie year a little bit, maybe, uh, just what comes to mind. Obviously we didn't end up, uh, winning at all. And, and obviously ended up with a disappointing loss in the, the first round of the playoffs, but take us through your rookie year, anything that comes to mind, uh, stories, you know, bus rides, spring camp, skit night, uh, rookie cut who cut your hair anything that uh anything that comes to mind when uh it comes to you know vi your vi days yeah so basically started training camp i was basically new guy bottom of uh depth charts and uh as a 17 year old like gang lined up against north rainy um mike west bonnet plume like um jared braun like those guys were just insane that was basically my welcome to junior moment when i had to cover mike west and he just bullied the shit out of me um first play <laughs> so i was like okay like i need to um get used to this pace i need like i need to step it up and basically training camp you know like you said with the rookie cuts um my vet was actually nice i had nathan winnig um, oh nice trash Nicest, nice, nicest, nicest guy ever. I saw um, some other cuts that the rookies cut. And I was just praying to God that I didn't get one, like one of those. But Nathan Winnig was, kind of, was so nice. He's like, yeah, I'll just give you like a mullet. I was like, okay, perfect. So my rookie haircut wasn't that bad. So um, it was it was blessed. And then um, after spring camp. Like I uh, made a couple plays. I started moving up the depth charts. And then probably a couple days before we played Langley on our uh, season opener, uh, I found out that I was starting um, field half. Um, the coach let me know, saying that I had a good spring cam, and they feel that they were confident that I was able to start right away. And then basically with that opportunity, I never looked back. Um, just every game, just – gave everything I had for VI, I just played my heart out. And then basically with the uh, group that I kind of gelled with, um, 
especially with Zach Taylor. He was also one of the few rookies that started on defense right away. So me and him uh, gelled pretty quick. And then we had guys like Will, <coughs> Jamal, um, Cody Harper, just a bunch of guys. Gage Dick, which was my backup, helped me a lot throughout that VI season. Um, not a lot of people get recognition, especially backups, but Gage was there for me like all the way. And I really appreciate for everything he's done for me. And like, we still talk now to this day once in a while. And yeah, I'm so thankful for him. Um, and yeah, basically the season, like you said, it was dis disappointing. Uh, we had bigger aspirations and all that, but personally had a great season, got a uh, rookie of the year for VI and yeah. So take us through, you know, you end up, I, I know you end up, uh, obviously, as you can see, leaving, but take us through maybe a little bit off the field. I know you kind of built some, uh, maybe not too much of, of relationships, but, you know, for probably VI, obviously now maybe you consider uh, St. FX, maybe like a second home, but I would consider at the time you probably consider, you know, Nimo and, and, and Nimo and, and Vancouver Island like a second home. You know, you really, uh, I felt like, you know, grew, grew to kind of love this place and kind of everything that it offers in terms of, you know, the kind of the scenery around here. And like you said, the oceans and stuff like that. Uh, so just maybe take us through kind of that uh, love that you grew for, you know, Vancouver Island and Nanaimo in general and how hard it was to end up, uh, you know, obviously leaving. I believe that you only stayed, what, you know, maybe 10 months or so, I guess, in Nanaimo, right? You only stayed for, for I guess, just take us through your, your, your experience in Nanaimo, Yodi, and then how long were you actually in Nanaimo? Yeah, so basically I was in Nanaimo for a year and a half because I came back during COVID because we didn't know if we we're going to have a season or not. And I also did a semester at VIU <laughs> during my COVID year. So I stayed <coughs> so I stayed there and um, I just loved out, like, the outdoor about Vancouver Island. It just offered everything. It had mountains, had forests, had the ocean. And I'm an out, uh, outdoor guy, kind of adventure guy. So... I, I would I was never bored of Vancouver Island. There's always there's always something new to discover. Go to Tofino, just go <coughs> go up north, go down south, Victoria, spend the day. And yeah, it was hard. It was hard to leave Nanaimo just because I felt like at that time was home for me, basically away from Strathmore, obviously. But it was hard to leave. But at the end of the day. I don't regret leaving. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad that you said that. And, uh, you know, that, that's definitely something that I wanted to ask you. And actually, I guess, you know, a perfect transition, actually, if, if, if you don't mind, I guess, is uh, something that I would say, I guess, is, you know, the, the question I want to ask to you is kind of uh, what do you think of kind of, unfortunately, the, the, the current state of, of, you know, VI right now? The, on the flip side, you know, is, is kind of, as much as I love some of the boys, you know, obviously like Gilly, Colton, uh, Zepic, Regan, obviously being one of my uh, closer buddies off the field. Um, you know, I love those boys, but I think the, the one thing that I would say, you know, to, to, you know, probably to both of, you know, maybe a few of them, I would say is probably they should have probably took the leap. Like, you know, you, you did as well as, you know, Zach, a few others have kind of, you know, maybe pursuing football outside of junior football. I think, um, you know, maybe they were, they were let down a little bit with uh, maybe not having, you know, stability, I feel like, behind them. And I think uh, that kind of hurt them in terms of maybe a little bit of success here in, in, in the past. But in terms of, you know, some positivity, Yodi, I, I know I'm sure you've been paying attention uh, to some of these scores and stuff like that. And just maybe anything that you would say to maybe the, the kind of the Raiders that, that, you know, personally I've been saying that some of these young guys, they're a very young team and just you need to kind of stick together and take these lumps. It might suck for the, the, the next couple of years and stuff like that, but – if they can keep a core group together. I feel like they can build something up again. And uh, you can only win so many BCFC champion championships before you have to go to the bottom to grow back up. So uh, what do you think, I guess, of the current state of the Raiders and just any positivity that, you know, you would say, I guess, to the guys, obviously uh, they're playing, uh, you know, shout out to, I guess it's, it's uh, Gilly, Regan, Zepic, and uh, I forget who the, the fourth and fifth are. There's only which is crazy, Yodi, five fifth years that are graduating. They play their last game uh, tomorrow night. I'll definitely be going to that one versus the West Shore Rebels, number one ranked team in uh, CJFL. So uh, shout out to those guys. But what do you think about the current state of the, state of the team right now and just any positive words that you'd uh, care to share for the boys? Yeah, so basically 
when I went to VI, VI kind of always had that mentality, you know, always one of the best teams in the country and all that. And then just basically the same mentality, I think, you know, COVID kind of destroyed the kind of what VI was at that time. I think that destroyed a lot. COVID destroyed a lot of things, you know, for players, teams, like a lot of people, you know, if it wasn't for COVID, I feel like a lot of people might have still been playing football. But with the COVID situation, it kind of destroyed everything. But as an alumni, you know, I want to see VI succeed, you know, VI till I die. And this year might be not the greatest year, but if, you know, any guys from the teams listening, the biggest thing that you should just keep, you know, keep the court, keep being positive, keep pushing each other because at the, at the end of the day, it's going to get better. And that if you guys are all, committed towards one goal and think and you guys have to think about what's best for the team not so individually that you guys are going to succeed and it also starts building a culture which like I said COVID pro- destroyed the old VI culture but there's people like Sean Araski, Arast- which I respect a lot that he's an amazing guy and I feel like he's going to be, be a big piece of restoring a new a uh, new culture that's going to win a lot of football games. Yeah, I love it, buddy. I agree with everything you just said there, especially with uh, Sean. I think the Raiders are in good hands with Sean at, uh, you know, kind of maybe overseeing things. And then hopefully Andrew Harris is able to come in next year and bring a lot of stability and a new uh, vision, a new culture. That's definitely something that's, uh, I think, definitely been tampered with is kind of that, that culture mentality. Um, and I think they need to grow it back. And hopefully they do here in the near future because, uh the, the Raiders are the 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 CGFL needs a good Raiders team to be competitive yeah. to uh to be a CGFL that as we know it. So um I guess kind of I guess my next transition, buddy, is kind of with COVID-19 and, and kind of it's so unfortunate I have to kind of every guest that I have on, um, you know, I always say this unfortunately, fortunately, I never had to deal with uh the COVID-19 pandemic and, and kind of that ruining uh my career or kind of you know putting a pause on my career. Uh, you know, after my Raiders season uh, in 2019 there, I was I was pretty uh, at peace with my career being over. I knew kind of coming into that year that uh, I even kind of knew coming into my junior career that that was kind of all that I wanted to pursue, uh, not being the greatest, uh, you know, student. I definitely admit that I would definitely not uh, kind of work out in that school-like environment with kind of the books and keeping up with that sort of thing. So I uh, knew that junior football was kind of all that I had envisioned in terms of my, uh, you know, football career you end up having to deal with the COVID pandemic. Uh, take us a little bit through that. Obviously, like you said, you end up staying in VI, enrolling at VIU. Uh, take us through kind of your experience first. And then, uh, yeah, I guess take us through your COVID-19 experience first and kind of how that uh, impacted you. Yeah, so basically a bit <coughs> a bit before um, the COVID-19 pandemic started, I went back home for a few months to kind of just get um, – top shape, just worked my ass off. And then um, during the COVID, we didn't really know if we're gonna have a season or not. There's a lot of unknowns with a lot of things. So I went back (coughs) to VI, got told that we're gonna have a season and that really affected me because I was like, hey, like I just worked my ass off and then next thing I know I don't have a season. It's like, so I just wasted five months of getting top shape just for nothing but i started trying to look for the positives i was like okay like i'm in school so i'm just gonna focus on school i don't really have to focus on football so basically just kind of focus on school um majority during covid and then um it changed a lot with playing wise because i would have played for vi um during the covid year but with covid i made i was talking to loved ones i was like okay this might be the time where I should, you know, explore my options or, you know, take uh, the next level, which is, which is youth sports. And before going into junior, my, my goal was always to go play youth sports. It was always been a dream of mine, but um, (coughs) use, use junior as a stepping stone. And then talking with loved ones, I was like, okay, we're going to explore options with youth sports. 
And tell us a little bit about those options. Obviously, you end up committing to St. Francis Xavier University over there on the East Coast. Take us through why you committed to uh, St. FX, and then was there any other uh, schools that you were interested in maybe going to as well? Yeah, so why? So St. FX, it's um, a small school, small community, but their pride, their pride. If you're from St. FX, like if if you come here at St. FX, like it's hard to explain, but it's like if you come here and just experience what St. FX is, then it's just something that separates St. FX from other schools, and mainly. I also came here mainly because of the coaches. Um, Gary Waterman, which is the head coach, um, made me feel like I was more than just a football player. They cared about me outside of football, and they just wanted me to be the best person I can be, but also be the best football person I can be. And as well, talking with the defensive coordinator, John Speck, position coach Bryce Fisher, and you know a couple guys that was already on the team just every all the good things that they were saying about San FX it just why not you know why not come here like I didn't care if it was across Canada <laughs> like I just <coughs> I just fell in love with the place and yeah I didn't look back and then I was also interested in other AUS schools was looking at Acadia because my defensive coordinator at uh, from high school, played at Acadia, and then looking at OUA, um, Water or no, not Waterloo, Windsor, and then looking at Canada West, I was kind of want well, wanted to go UBC. Was kind of interested, but kind of didn't really um, reach out to them. Kind of just stuck with Saint Effects. Yeah, buddy. So you end up uh, now. It's it's what three years later. You've been there. Uh, all these memories that you built already. So um, before we kind of get into the St. FX side of things, I'm curious. I got to ask personally, as uh, someone that's never played a snap in U Sports, what is the, uh, you know, maybe biggest difference from CJFL to U Sports? Um, do you feel that there's that big, like there's a, a major difference? And just kind of uh, how you adapted to, you know, the, I feel like kind of the same thing that you came to in BI. You know, you're a younger type player. Uh, you're a younger type player for St. FX. You I think started to make an impact from a, uh, a from early games, I believe, in your 2021 season. So just take us through that as well. Yeah. So basically, from high school to junior was a big leap. It was such a big difference with the pace of style, like the guys, everything. But junior and U Sports, it's still a jump, but it's not as big of a jump. U Sports is <coughs> quicker than. Um, junior and then everyone like you sport just wants to win everyone's competitive and just like the whole camaraderie and like just like the competitiveness of like you sports is like people are gonna try to kill you and like hit stick you like everything like everyone wants to win in you sports and it's like especially out on the east coast like if like school pride is a huge thing here so when we play you know like whatever opponent we face it's a big deal for our school it's a big deal for our community and then um yeah like you said i came here first year 2021 um i started behind a guy that you may know cole Vertanen, another vi guy um yeah he kind of took me under his wing and then I was fortunate to dress first game. Um, I was special teams for the first two games until, unfortunately, Cole Vertanen got a serious concussion injury. And then my third game was against Mount A. Um, they told me that I was starting. And then the first game, I had eight tackles and the game-winning interception. And then basically after that, I didn't look back, um, kept – Kept doing my thing um, at the end of the year for 2021, led the country in interceptions, tied. Um, and then we were able to win the AUS championship. And we unfortunately lost to Western in the semifinals that year. Yeah, shout out to uh, Cole, another uh, VI alum, as well as a VI, proud VI boy as well. 
a uh, good buddy of mine growing up. Shout out to uh, Cole. Hope he's doing well out there on the East Coast. He's actually made the East Coast home, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Met himself uh, a lady as well, I believe, and uh, settled down there in uh, what, what's actually, I guess, the, the, the town that you guys, uh, St. FX is in, Yodi? <laughs> I, I can't pronounce it to save my life, but it's uh, anti Nagish, anti Nagish. I don't even know, man. It's just, I'm French, so the pronunciation's messed up. <laughs> I got you. Anti Nagish? And, and, Antinagish, that's probably close. Close, <laughs> close, close enough. I, I don't know if I'll ever make my way that far <laughs> east, to, to be quite honest. But uh, definitely produce some some great football players and definitely uh, some BI guys have gravitated to uh, St. Francis Xavier. There's been uh, a few. Obviously, you're playing with uh, Zach as well. That's another uh, BI boy, Barsby guy as well. Um, so like you touched on, you were talking about leading the uh, you know country in picks or tying for the lead in picks with four. Um, you guys end up leaving or uh, winning the AUS championship. Um, I was looking, I guess, at a few things when I was doing a little bit of research for this. I believe I'm not mistaken, and, and I'll definitely knock on wood, Yodi, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have not lost a regular season game in your uh, Saint Effects career, if I'm not mistaken. Like I said, hopefully I'm not jinxing anybody. I'm knocking on wood. Uh, I, I don't need to have any angry DMs tomorrow night after you guys uh, hopefully win tomorrow night. But uh, take us through that, buddy. You know, obviously at VI, I think we were like, you know, five and five or something like that, or like four and five and one or something like that. We were, uh, you know, a 500 team. I think uh, roster wise, we could have competed with anybody, right? I think that's not a outlandish thing to say. That's a, it's not a, a hot take. That's a, a very fair take. I think if you look at our roster, I think we definitely under, under, underachieved a little bit at VI. And uh, obviously, you guys have uh, pretty much played to expectations over there in Nova Scotia. How, how has that been, kind of not losing a game in that, uh, you know, that culture that I feel like that you guys have been building over there in St. FX? Yeah, like, just with that, it just shows uh, the culture we have here at St. FX. It's, you know, um, it's like from the top guy to the bottom guy in the locker room, we just treat each other like family and, like, I think why we're winning games is because we're so scared of losing because in my experience so far at St. FX, we haven't experienced losing in our conference. And I know that every guy in the locker room does not want to lose and that we will do whatever it takes to win football games. And that, that might be, we might be down, you know, 20 at half, but then we just find a way to get over, you know, the adversity and, win and then just the culture you know it starts with our head coach and just the things that he's teaching us about you know not just football but also life lesson just makes us uh better people and just the whole family group like every guy like it's just crazy it's just like we're all family and like you see like outside of football you see dbs hanging out with old linemen you see quarterbacks hanging out with d tackles like not like it doesn't matter position doesn't matter what year you are it doesn't matter where you're from is that we're all one big family love it buddy um so i'm curious to uh kind of hear this side of things is uh you know you guys end up having you know 2021 you have uh some success that probably wasn't uh i'm not too sure kind of i don't keep too much an eye on obviously the oua is so big i, I kind of keep a little bit of an eye on on who's doing what or who's kind of uh projected to do what I would imagine you guys were probably, you know, maybe not underdogs coming into 2021, but uh, you end up obviously winning your conference, doing uh, really big things. And then coming into 2022, uh, probably, you know, really cementing your guys' uh, you know, we're actually here. Like this this is a, a real thing. Uh, you know, St. FX is not a joke to, to you know, c consider nationally. You know, I'm talking about considering, you know, competing for uh, a national championship and, and stuff like that. So maybe take us through a little bit of last season. Then obviously you guys, uh, end up having a heartbreaker in the national semifinal against the University of Saskatchewan, obviously winning the back-to-back -back, uh, AUS championships once again. Um, and then you obviously uh, probably as confident as ever going to that game, right? Uh, you know, we could we'd definitely win this, and, and we're only one step away from our ultimate goal of getting an opportunity to compete for a uh, national championship. So take us through last season and kind of how uh, you know tough that was to obviously walk up the field with a loss to University of Saskatchewan. Yeah, so basically, um, 
after the Western um, game, I remember like me uh, just being with the guys in the locker room and we told ourselves that we're never going to experience how we feel right now. And kind of all the guys kind of looked at each other. We're like, okay, we're going to work our asses off for during the off season. That next year is going to be different. And then, you know, going into 2022, um, one AUS. And then we, we uh, found out that we were playing Saskatchewan. And then we, we know that a lot of people, you know, outside of, you know, our team outside of St. Effects is like, outside of basically our conference not a lot of people believe in us they just think aus you know is just a bye week to the vanier and all that so that was kind of our motivation for that week that we knew that we were the smaller school that we didn't have the same budget as saskatchewan that you know they had a bunch of more things than what we had but the one thing that they couldn't you know have uh, over us was our heart and pride and we knew that we're going to give Saskatchewan 60 minutes of football and then um, basically game time uh, rolled in we were uh, it was basically tied it was tied game till seven minutes left in the fourth quarter and then they had you know they made a couple plays and then that kind of sealed the game there but um, we after the game even though we lost, it kind of sucked. We kind of looked at ourselves and we kind of said that, like, hey, we can actually compete nationally and that we put St. FX on a map and that we're, we we have to continue to build on from that SAS game. Definitely put St. FX on the map, buddy, as a legitimate contender in the country, I think. Uh, not just, like you said, a cakewalk to the national championship. Uh, obviously, this season, getting jumping into this season, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but you guys are the – Fifth ranked team in the country right now at six and zero, like I said. So that is, uh, I guess, conference wise, that is what twenty. You're twenty and zero, which is absolutely insane, my man. In your uh, Saint Effects career, must be Yodi. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little biased, uh, but uh, I guess, buddy, to, to kind of wrap things up, to get into this season, obviously, you guys have been having some success. Uh, this is obviously you're joining me, not to, to spoil things for folks, but you're or not even to maybe actually get you in trouble uh you're obviously joining me on a, on a game night eve obviously playing tomorrow but uh what would it mean to you and your teammates your brothers in arm uh your brothers for, for life and stuff like that that obviously uh you know you know you always hear like you know teams that win championships they always talk about you know we come back 30 years from now we're always you know talking about the the kind of bond that we've set for life and obviously uh you're still going to have those bonds with your brothers for life but what would it mean to you your teammates to bring a national championship back to saint francis xavier It'd be, it'd be unreal. Like we have to focus one game at a time. Obviously, you know, our conference is tough and everyone, everyone wants to beat us. Like we haven't lost in four years. So everyone's going to give their all to try to beat us in our conference. But we know that after this year, there's a lot of guys that from the 2021 season that they'll be gone. And that for me personally, I'll still be here after this year, but just to think about those guys last year that you know us young guys we just want to give everything we have for them and try to bring back home uh danny cup yeah absolutely there's only uh ultimately one lucky team at the end of the day that kind of uh you know th those fifth years are able to have you know maybe happy tears at the end of the, their last football game but uh it's definitely the one um you know kind of shitty side of football of, you know when those fifth years have their you know they, they kind of sets in that that was their last snap of football so definitely definitely big motivation i would feel like for your guys this group to uh you know capitalize on this core group that you guys have uh kind of built here together at st effects i feel like you guys have definitely put st effects on the map and uh definitely is going to be a uh interesting uh I, i'm i know i'm far away and it's hard to keep an eye on on you guys in the aus but i'm definitely going to keep an eye on you guys and uh, interested to see when it comes to playoff time. I was able to watch that uh, U of SAS game. Obviously, it's televised. Um, are, are, is there a free subscription for the AUS, or is it is it uh, paid like the Can West to watch? Yeah, that it's game? Uh, it's free. So you just have to sign up, and you can watch the games for free. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll definitely try to keep an eye, Yodi, and because uh, I know I, when when uh, shout out to one of my other good buddies played at Western uh, OUA TV is actually 
it free as well. You can yeah. able you just sign up and, and kind of watch. The shitty thing about Cam West, man, I can't believe they make you play for the pay for the games. No, I, I, I've been trying to Yodi uh, do my best this year to kind of you know grow U Sports a little bit more. I feel like that's uh, one thing that needs to be talked about a little bit more. And uh, you know, down in down in the states, you know, everybody and their mom has a podcast about you know the, the NFL, but you know, everybody's talking about college football, whether it be you know you you even see like. You know, last chance you like Juco College yeah. is having their own Netflix show and stuff like that. I think that's something that's lacking and uh, obviously a big reason why I wanted to have you on. But um, just trying to get my way into, you know, watching you uh, sports a little bit more and trying to, uh, you know, build a little bit more of a narrative and get my, uh, you know, fellow athletes a little bit more of a platform. They're able to, you know, maybe uh, grow their brand a little bit more and just kind of get, get uh, their name out there of kind of, you know, talking a little bit about and, and even learning about some of your cool stories, learning about your story, I think. Uh, we'll be cool. We'll get into something a little bit more that will, I think, uh, interested some interest some people a little bit more. But uh, to kind of wrap things up, you guys obviously, like you said, I think the one uh, good thing that that you have a mindset of, and I would imagine the rest of the locker room has a mindset of, you know, handling our business. And you know, one week at a time. Obviously, our goal is a national championship, but not to look too far ahead. Let's handle, uh, you know, practice tonight, walk through tonight, whatever it may be. Let's handle, you know, getting up in the morning, uh, getting to the stadium. You know, kind of. Uh, focusing on this one game at a time and then let's uh you know focus about the national championship playoff games when those come but uh the one thing i'd say to you guys buddy is you know you guys have definitely earned your respect and you know every other team although uh you know the oua canada west is definitely tough to uh compete with they strap up the same way that you guys do they put their yeah. their you know game pants on the way that you guys do as well right so they're no different than you guys and you guys can uh, compete with anybody in the country so definitely keep an eye on you guys buddy and uh, we'll be rooting for you guys this season so uh, I guess anything that you guys want to say to maybe anybody that's uh, listening out there and saying the get out to any games, you guys playing at home tomorrow or are you guys on the road tomorrow? Playing at home, obviously. Probably. Yeah, so yeah, so we're at home tomorrow. It's actually our homecoming game um, against Mount Mount A. So it's going to be huge. Just the – just – oh, shit, I thought I was paused for a second. Yeah. <laughs> just the <laughs> – just um just hearing from the town and just hearing from you know university all the people at you know saint effects that it's going to be a rowdy energetic game and i know that everyone's going to come out for tomorrow for our homecoming yeah buddy and uh hope you guys have a good homecoming hoping it's a rocking atmosphere hope you guys have a lot i know you'll be bringing the juice and the energy of that's for damn sure of course and uh, wish you guys the best of luck the rest of this season. Go St. Effects. My last football question before we kind of uh, change to a little bit off the field is, I'm curious, with all that energy, all that juice, I'm, I'm sure you're a little bit of a football fan uh, growing up. Who was your, some of your biggest influences on the field? Maybe some of your, like, uh, where you draw some of that energy from? Maybe, like, I, I think of uh, maybe, like, Ed Reed kind of thing. Kind of, but, like, who are your, some of your biggest influences if maybe they're not, like, Ed Reed-type players? Yeah, so it's now basically um there you go. Okay. Um yeah, so basically like it's at Henry Sean Dare, um Brian's Oh I lost you. Sorry about that folks, a little technical difficulties. Yodi swinging it back over to you, buddy. Who are some of your biggest influences on the field as a football player? Um Basically, my biggest influences were basically people like Ed Reed, um, Brian Dawkins, um, my favorite player, um, Eric Weddle. Um, basically, Eric Weddle was basically, you know, he wasn't the biggest guy, but his technique and just how he played football just separated him from, you know, the other players. So, sorry, Yodi, I got to make this joke because, you know, there's not a lot of white dbs out there so that's why uh he must be one of your favorite players buddy but i had to make that joke not to get uh too too uh too uh, i'm not even gonna get into a bait folks I, I don't mean any harm just a uh just a joke here but uh yodi i appreciate you talking some football with me buddy um like i said definitely someone that i i kind of kept my eyes on right away when we became teammates had my kind of uh, you know, eyes on you, respected everything, how you approach the game, how you take things seriously, the way that you played the game. Um, and definitely something that I wanted to, you know, someone I wanted to get on the podcast and chat a little bit about fo the football side of things, hear about your journey a little bit, hear about kind of uh, your story and kind of how what shaped you and molded you to uh, who you are today. So uh, even even I guess speaking more into, you know, shaping to who you are today is 
what you were doing off the field, Yodi. I know you uh, kind of recently opened up to, um, you know, probably a little bit more, I, I would just say, you know, maybe public to more than maybe a few handful of people that maybe your close circle of, you know, maybe that knew of uh, some of the, the things that you were going on with you. But I'm curious, buddy, I know you have some things going on off the field in terms of, I believe you founded, uh, what is it, all uh, all 365 and one. Um, kind of tell us a little bit of, of uh, I guess, your journey and kind of where I guess what I've started is kind of the, the five W's of kind of like, what, like when, when did this happen? Kind of where, when did you start to kind of feel this way? Uh, you know, who did maybe some of you, who, who were kind of your, some of your, uh, you know, stable people that you were able to kind of, you know, lean on in some of those tough times. And, uh, you know, why did you feel like that way? It was uh, important to, you know, spread the message. And I feel like kind of, you know, reach out to people that maybe are, you know, afraid to, uh, you know, be vocal about it and, and maybe shameful. Sh they feel ashamed kind of thing. So just tell us a little bit of kind of the journey that you've been on the last uh, little while, buddy. Yeah, so basically um september 20 2022 i was basically at the lowest point of my life um i i started to not love football um i struggled with you know depression anxiety um just wasn't happy with life and as a student athlete it's it's very hard to open up and so during that time i wasn't able to open up even to, you know to my brothers like here to my family back home basically to anyone because I didn't know how someone would look uh you know this student athlete guys uh this you know looking at me like okay why is this guy you know this and this so basically um was just didn't you know didn't enjoy um I have to shout out to uh, my coach, uh, Gary Waterman. Um, he helped me with a lot. Um, I, I don't think I would be here um, if it wasn't for him. Um, I, that's another reason why I chose St. FX was uh, because of, of him, you know, just he was there for me no matter what. And then basically he was able to pick me up back on my feet for the next couple months. And then January um, 2023 on Bell S Talk Day, I decided to release a mental health video about kind of my journey over the last couple of years and uh, kind of just raising awareness for mental health with um, student athletes, males, basically everyone. And then at first when I dropped the video, it was kind of, I was kind of scared because, you know, you're dropping how you felt about, you know, you're dropping how you felt about the last two years and you're basically letting the world see of what you went through and like your lowest point of your life. So at first I was scared, you know, releasing it <coughs> and I didn't expect, you know, anything out of it. I was kind of just wanted to the video to kind of just reach out to my friends and you know people i'm close with and you know people following me to show that you know it's okay to open up like you don't have to be tough and like everyone has shitty days and then basically that video just blew up got a bunch of you know positivity um got it went from you know from the west coast to the east coast it reached like 15,000 views or something and I got a lot of support and you know with that support it made me want to do something more so I decided to open kind of make a mental health um, page which is all 365 in one kind of just to wear, raise awareness with mental health and kind of just break the stigma and I've been really busy with school and football but um, hopefully once I get more free time, I can start blowing that up. But um, I think that video is a stepping stone for, you know, for what I want to advocate outside of football. And um, I really take pride in being, you know, an ambassador for, you know, my team, same effects, just to um, raise awareness for mental health. Yeah, but I think that's something that I, I definitely respect to you is you were able to be vulnerable, right? And, and kind of let your walls down to, uh, you know, a lot of people, obviously, 
uh you kind of released it with uh kind of that that longer video and, and you know obviously you have like your close friends and stuff like that on social media and stuff like that on instagram but you know you know you have probably you know average you know maybe like a few hundred followers right not everyone's going to be your close personal friend right so you're kind of uh letting it out to out there to maybe some people that uh you know aren't in your circle maybe you think that you know like you said you're a little bit nervous and so like that maybe you think that they're gonna uh laugh at you kind of thing and uh that's something that i definitely tip my cap like i said to you of being vulnerable letting your walls down uh letting people uh young athletes young males like you said know that it's okay to uh you know voice their kind of uh what's going on in their head and stuff like that um the thing that i respect that as well from you is kind of uh i feel like we 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 share similar similar uh kind of the w way we think and kind of you know yeah yeah maybe we're, we're struggling but uh you know i i would never i would never guess that kind of like someone like you yodi that that would be kind of you know struggling right and you you handle it like uh you know once you get out of you know your room or, or your dorm or whatever uh you put you know whether it maybe be uh maybe wrongful but you kind of put on that mask and no one would ever know it right you kind of are the same yodi you're, you're energetic you're, you're you're smiling you're bringing energy to the rooms that you're in right and kind of you know you're still sharing and kind of maybe appearing like you're the, the same guy but in the inside you're kind of struggling with uh, a lot of demons and stuff like that a lot of uh maybe second guessing yourself and stuff like that so like i said buddy just so much respect to you and, and kind of being vulnerable uh and, and really speaking to a lot of people and kind of uh you know maybe some of those people that you probably would expect that would maybe laugh at you i bet you you helped a lot of those people and kind of being able to you know see yourself be like that and kind of uh, you know, helping a lot of people that I would imagine you did with that video. So, um, you know, my next question, I guess, is kind of what is the, the vision that you have with this uh, kind of all all of 365 and one um, in terms of kind of like, like, do, do you just uh, like you want to be kind of like a, uh, I guess, like a, 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 a voice out there for someone like, you know, if they need somebody to kind of like talk to or maybe, you know, some advice of, of how to handle it type thing. What is kind of your vision for this uh, moving forward? I guess I know, I know, like you said, kind of not to put too much pressure on you because of how busy you are during season and then is in, in off season as well. Just having to keep up with the books and stuff like that, and having to study all that stuff, friends and all that stuff. I know it's it's a lot. Having the podcast, man, it's 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 a ton of uh, <laughs> extra work that's not needed. A lot of uh, you know nights that you know I love to probably go to bed or something like that after work on Thursday nights instead of going on live stream stuff like that. Uh, having to get on the podcast um it's something i love to do just like i i would imagine that you're kind of enjoying the love to uh spread awareness of, of mental health but what's what's your vision for this moving forward my friend yeah so for me i i believe that the biggest thing to um to break the stigma with mental health is to hear stories to have conversations and for me with the all 365 in one page my goal is to share stories um from a wide range of um individuals it might be you know a 33 year old paramedic or it might be a 19 year old student athlete like i want to show the world that everyone you know that everyone goes through different stuff and that you know especially with male mental health um i want to express because with <laughs> sorry with men's mental health so i just want to spread awareness for that and share as many stories because one story might relate to someone listening or someone watching to that to the to my page and that could change their lives that could save their lives and that we just need to have daily conversations and that like you said like I also want to show that, you know, some people might say, oh, I never expected out of you. You know, that's the thing that I'm showing that like the least the person that you might not expect the most, they might be struggling on the inside. And that if you just ask them how they're doing or if you just check up on them, it could literally save their lives. So that's what I want to, you know, try to um, showcase to the world love it buddy you kind of just answered my last question that i had for you in there but i think it was uh, a great one but my, my not to put you on the spot here but just kind of what would be maybe your your message to maybe somebody that's you know maybe tuning in tonight or, or maybe whenever i release this uh that's maybe listening to this video uh what would be kind of your message to them to you know maybe keep going any positive thoughts just 
any message that you have to anybody that's uh, listening in terms of you know mental health side of things buddy um yes it's so basically my one thing is that it's okay to be not okay um that no matter what you're going through that people love you and that people are going to be there for you and that you know you might feel like <laughs> the loneliest person ever and that's okay and that just get you know get through one day at a time and that you know it's like i said it's okay to open up and that the i guess basically what i'm trying to say it's like there's no good health without a good mental health and that it doesn't matter what people say or what other people might think of you that as long as you're doing good then that's what it matters that if you ever feel like you're thinking about suicide or anything just reach out because i know that a lot of people around you might like love you and that they'll do whatever it takes to you know help you and get back on your feet love it buddy uh i thank you so much for kind of being vulnerable there for a second and kind of uh you know being on being on you know a platform and kind of you know talking a little bit about yourself and your feelings and how you feel and stuff like that and uh you know like i said i definitely carry myself a little bit similar to the way that you did or the way that you do excuse me and uh kind of how you know it, it wouldn't maybe it's 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 not expected in the in the least person but um like i said uh, i kind of i feel like everybody has some sort of mental health right so i try to kind of treat that like you know i don't really have it that rough right like somebody else is going through you know maybe like like what we're seeing today right with in these some of these war ridden countries and stuff like that so i always try to no matter what i'm going through uh mentally i always try to flip it kind of when when you know i'm around people and trying to you know bring the energy try to uh be affectious and kind of you know change the way uh the mood is in the room and i feel like you're very similar to that and uh you know people would never guess that you know nathan coyotes may be going through a little bit of uh struggles off the field or, or kind of mentally because uh the way you are around people and the way that you're so affectious and kind of like i said uh multiple times now bring the energy the juice uh whatever room you're in whatever bus you're on uh, from coast to coast, any team you're on, buddy, you uh, continue to be a shining light. So like I said, buddy, just tip my cap off to you. Respect you so much. And uh, that's, I guess, pretty much uh, it, buddy. That was uh, not too hard. Hey, a little no. hour, and a, hour and 15, nothing uh, to be too nervous about. We talked some ball, talked a little bit about you growing up, uh, the mental health side of things. I think really happy that we were able to have that conversation. I think Hopefully, maybe someone's able to hear that just like your page. Someone's able to hear some of what you talked about, able to maybe read a story on your page. And I think really change someone's life. And I think uh, hopefully they're able to listen to this and really uh, enjoy what we're able to talk about tonight because we were able to talk a little bit, talk about a lot, excuse me. Um, and before we get out of here, buddy, I wanted to kind of uh, plug you a little bit. Maybe let the people know where they can uh, follow. I know you guys have the, the social media on Instagram uh tell us a little bit maybe where they can follow that i know not right now maybe they could expect uh some posts and stuff like that but maybe can uh where can the people follow you i guess in yeah, terms of so, that, that, that your page yeah so basically with the mental health video it's on my personal page um nathan Cayuette. and then um in my bio you'll find um my second account which is all 365 and one where i that's that's the mental health page and yeah basically i only have on instagram right now but um trying to grow our future plans on maybe you know starting a podcast like you with mental health and bring on people and they're able to share their mental health stories love it buddy so good get over there folks uh sorry Yodi, i don't have too many listeners buddy so i'm not too sure how many people will uh swing your way but <laughs> so anybody, good, if anybody's listening tonight uh get over to Yodi's page please give him a follow support anything that he's doing go comment a heart or something like that on his post and uh get him to uh get active here when the uh season's over when he brings a national championship back to uh st effects is that right uh of course, so that's the goal that's the goal buddy uh like i said Yodi, i appreciate you so much for jumping on here buddy talking a little bit about uh everything and just kind of you know, hearing about your journey throughout uh, your life, growing up a little bit and kind of, you know, like I said, taking that uh, leap of faith from home as a, as a youngster uh, and really growing as a man. I can see you, how, how much you've matured already, even though you, you've been that mature since uh, you were 17, 18 year old coming into spring camp. 
always carried yourself like that and uh, can can see you're uh, continuing to be a uh, good young man the older you get so keep doing what you're doing buddy uh for all those that are listening tonight please continue to like comment subscribe like i said we're on the road to 100 subscribers folks so get over there yodi go get over there buddies tell uh, all your nova scotia friends we're on, we on the road to 100 subscribers we're at 81 81 or two i believe so we need 18 more folks so uh not too many more people get over there subscribe uh, I think it's the 10 month mark that I started the podcast. So it'd be sick if we could get to 100 subscribers before a year. I, I know, I guess it's eight months. I started in uh, February. So it's only October. Uh, I have four months. So I, I expect That's to cool. get to it at least. Let, let's get to it by, uh, let's say, Christmas, Yodi. So anybody listening to uh, the podcast over there in Nova Scotia, I talk a little bit about uh, all kinds of football, NFL, CFL, U sports. I try to talk a little bit about it all, especially Canadian football, trying to grow. Uh, the game a little bit up here. I think our athletes can compete with the best of them and uh, prove that year in and year out when the uh, Canadians go in the NFL draft. You know, I think there's, you know, five, six of them that get drafted now every year. It's been a lot to, it's been good to see the, the Canadians get recognized in the sport. So uh, trying to grow the, the platform for these athletes. And I think some of them need to get, get talked about a little bit more, you being uh, one of those included. So uh, wishing you luck this season, Yodi. Expecting uh, big things from you, buddy. Hoping to uh, see you on uh, CFL draft boards in uh, the, the years to come or something like that. If not, I know you're doing good things off the field anyway. So, uh, like I said, buddy, just wishing you all the success. It has been so good to talk to you. It's been a while. And uh, definitely keep in touch, buddy. Don't be a stranger. You uh, know where to find me. Always have uh, you have always have a brother in me. Always have a friend in me, buddy. So, uh, anytime you need to talk, you know where to find me. Uh, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I think it was a really good one. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode of Coast Coast Gridiron.